Welcome back to the show, everybody. We got a good one for you today. We're going to have recent comments from Glenn Hutchins, the former head of the New York Federal Reserve and DCG Group partner. We're also going to hear from Andrew Bailey from the Bank of England governor, who's got remarks about cryptocurrency. I think you'd be surprised what he says. And we got to focus on three important things that need to happen so we can all get back to focusing on getting rich in this crypto space. Let's roll that beautiful intro. Here we go. This is Digital Perspectives with Brad Kimes. Subscribe for new content notifications. Now, here's Brad Kimes. Come on in. Welcome back to the show, everybody. You can follow me on Twitter at BackupBradley above at the top of the screen and everything that we're talking about here today. Looking at the crypto market currently right now, let me refresh, make sure we're with it here. We are now slightly under a trillion dollar collectively for the crypto asset space. Bitcoin is up from this morning to 33,792. And number five spot, courtesy of the SEC's dereliction of duty, XRP is sitting at 0.27 cents this morning or this afternoon. So let's go ahead and get right into this thing. We're going to hear some great clips and we're going to talk about some three very important things that really need to get worked out sooner rather than later for all of us in the crypto space so we can focus on getting rich again in this space <laughs> all right let's take a look at this it's always nice to remind ourselves and james rule xrp does it here shout out to you my friend there are still scams do not accept emails or text messages you will lose your crypto and money no crypto is free uh, i want to take this time to remind people if you are in the comment sections often or occasionally in my videos you will see that there are many many different scammers trying to impersonate my profile and it is not me if you do not see the the dark verified uh, caption beside my name it's someone just using my profile picture asking you to dial a number and to to go buy something i guess do not do it do not cater to it just report it i actually report it i have an assistant who helps report it as well so make sure you just stay on it we're staying on it and hopefully soon we can get youtube to stay on it as well so that's the public service announcement for today here real quick over some short little news here that just kind of little flashes in the pan but you see it coming and this is one of them right here. Employee tech firm uh, providing assistance to U.S. securities can now be paid in crypto. And basically what it's saying is, is that after taxes, there's a third party payment provider to a company that caters to software, data collection, aggregating information to help settle securities. And basically the employees there can now choose after taxes to receive some of their pay in crypto. I think that's exciting. I mean, it makes me think of I Trust Capital, and I don't think you can get anything better than I Trust Capital. Make sure you check that out in the description box and comment section. This is interesting because this is long awaited, and I think it is going to be one of the industries that's absolutely turned on its head in a positive way long term, because what you're going to see is a lot of the friction of the industry, the way it operates today, be eliminated, and that's real estate. And they say real estate is ready for tokenization and I am all for it. And let's not stop with just commercial real estate. Let's go ahead and commercialize everything right while we're there. This comes from SEC Crypto Mom. This is from Hester Purse. And I'm not going to read you this whole article. You can breathe a sigh of relief. But I am going to tell you what it is about. And essentially, she's just asking that we have innovation and not have that stifled. I'm paraphrasing, obviously, here for the new leader that comes in, which does appear to be Gary Gensler, and that this is a time to embrace the innovation and move, help move forward, help it all happen. So uh, here we go. Uh, this is Coinbase to offer for a secondary market on uh, NASDAQ for its private stock before the IPO. Remember, we announced that Coinbase uh, filed for a confidential IPO, which is different than your traditional IPO. And this next stage takes them to NASDAQ's private stock offering, and they are going to be selling private equity to Coinbase on there. But we don't know it just yet for what limited amount of time it will be. I did look in the article and it didn't tell me. So I am trying to find out. And if anyone knows, it'll be interesting to know how long they're going to let this private stock be issued in that secondary private market. Uh, before it does eventually go uh, go public, fully public. So we'll keep an eye on that. But that's exciting. Coinbase is enormous. 
Right here, we see Bank of Singapore from XRP Crypto Wolf says crypto could replace gold as a store of value. Listen to this highlighted spot here. You're going to like it. Governments are very wary of, of any technology that could potentially displace national currencies. This would reduce the ability of policymakers to print money during the economic crisis. You know, uh, I, I have said this in suggestion of a potential outcome. Not that I believe it, but just because I, I have to speculate what may happen with my investment. And in fact, if we're in this space, none of us know what's going to happen, and I surely don't, but I'm not afraid to entertain the outcomes of what they could be, one of which is that there is a security designation of some sort for XRP, and because of that, it would come away from there, I would, I firmly believe, in a bond, bearer bond-like digital status, and allowing the utility to, to move freely to settle things, I think you could potentially see an outcome like that. I'm not saying you will, but if you would, then I believe you could eliminate the threat that is highlighted here by the Bank of Singapore that you would not challenge the other national currencies if you had a slightly different designation for something like XRP, but it didn't hinder XRP's full scale intended use. Looking right here, uh, Bank of England Governor Andrew Bailey says the perfect cryptocurrency is yet to be designed. Oh, really? <laughs> That's interesting. Look, as the internal optimist, it's a very short article, but he just says it hasn't been designed yet. And he's saying we got to keep stability of value, tackling various criminal uses and finding the balance when it comes to privacy as his main priorities. I agree. I understand. I get all of that. He puts nothing, not even technology before the public's interest. And I get it. Totally get it. And look, Bank of England has done enormous tests with uh, Ripple and XRP and the real-time growth settlement system. So that is before his tenure there. So uh, maybe, and I'm the eternal optimist, when he's saying cryptocurrency, he's not even actually thinking of XRP because he may see that as, I don't know, maybe a global stable coin or a digital bear bond that's used as an exchange token. I don't know what's going through his head, but I just know as the eternal optimist and knowing that Bank of England has done successful trials with Ripple, I doubt he's referencing XRP. Looking here, we have Glenn Hutchins, the one and only Glenn Hutchins here speaking at Davos. Let's hear what he says about the value of a token and how it will be driven by its use cases. And let's, let's talk. It's important. we got to talk about this up a whole new way of using this digital currency technology uh, and a whole new set of products can be created around that. And it, we're now evolving into each um, particular company or each particular network that's created with a set of use cases has its own token. So we're, we're at a place now where there are going to be a proliferation of uh, tokens run on that networks based upon certain protocols. And um, so there, there will be multiple tokens that will be used. And my guess is, and those will be driven by the use cases that we present to consumers to use those tokens. And then they'll come back, in my view, into things like protocol, into things like Bitcoin and stable coins for purposes of being a store of value. And there you have it. And the ladies asked him the question, you mean like Europe before the euro? <laughs> it wasn't a bad question, but the clip cuts off. I would have loved to heard his response to that. However, I do want to talk about the fact that, uh, you know, Glenn Hutchins, obviously big in the picks and shovels behind the crypto and, and, and not as much in the crypto as he is behind the crypto. Uh, but he's clearly stated in the past that the value is in the protocol. Right. And here's where I want to, like, just make the point here. Look, this is a top discussion at the World Economic Forum with the world's biggest leaders. If that's not speaking to you, I don't know if anything will, to be honest with you. This is front and center on the world stage, the idea of cryptocurrencies and payment networks with blockchains and distributed ledger technology, right? And the other point that he, that he actually made in here was that it's driven by its use cases. That's right. We're going to talk about a new watermark for the cryptocurrency space. There are 8,302 or six uh, different cryptocurrencies. There are not 8,302 or six use cases. I can assure you of that. 
So what he talked about with a wave or a proliferation of crypto to come is innovation. And he doesn't see it being stifled in any way. And what I see is the same thing. And I see the survival of the fittest. The strong swimmer wins. That's the way this goes. And that's the way a market should be allowed to go. Honestly, just the same way that we watch the internet develop into what it is today. It's just, you know, I think it's fascinating, honestly. I mean, I think we're all looking for that when moon, when Lambo moment kind of thing. But that's, this is, look at what we're talking about. We're talking about the world's leaders talking about digital currencies and resetting digital currencies. That, isn't that a key phrase? We're resetting them? Yeah, I think we are resetting them. And I'm going to run that down for you now because I said that there was three things happening in crypto that needed to get settled in order for all of us to go back to focus on getting rich and building our portfolios to where we want them. One is front end, getting the stable coin issue straight. What do I mean by that? One, getting digital dollars launched around the world for the different government's money. Two, Dealing with USD Tether and Bitfinex, if all of that is what they say it is in the case, it's going to get decimated if it is in fact true, right? And if it is, then we're going to need a digital dollar to replace the said Tether if that's the case. So if that's the case, imagine the front end of the market getting cleaned out just like that. They rip out the bad if it should be, and put in something, let's say, USD coin or PAX coin, and these get the good housekeeping seal that they are good to go, and this is the equivalent of a public-private relationship with the U.S. government, and these are, in fact, back just like dollars. That's the front end. That's one. Two would be the clarity on XRP. Whatever you want to call it, security, not a security, currency, a dolphin, a tennis racket, I don't care. As long as you don't hurt me holding it and the fact that we can have the full scale intended use of it go into effect and work without any issue, I don't care what you call it. But that back end clarity has got to be there for XRP because we understand from the World Economic Forum and all the documents we've seen that it is really designed to settle back end. Brad Garlinghouse has told us himself, this is not a consumer-facing product, and so is Michelle Bond at her time at Ripple and many, many others there to tell us exactly where the target audience is and its institutional use, sophisticated institutions. As Dillard Rouse says, so that's two, that's the back end. Number three, the other thing we need to get straight is simply this. Custody, and this is PolySign. That's right, put together by David Schwartz and Arthur Brito. Polyside. If you think about the front end and the lawsuit of $1.4 trillion on Bitfinex right now, straightening out the on and off ramp and getting the legitimate, the legitimate products in place and any bad actors out of place, and then the back end clarity for the wholesale market like the central banking system, and getting XRP the clarity it needs. And there's the front and the back end. Well, what else do we need to do? Custody. We have to have custody to a further degree than it currently is in this space. You know, the whole, you know, uh, not your keys, not your crypto. Well, that isn't how I feel with, you know, if not your stock, you know, uh, not your stock papers, not your stocks. I keep stocks on Fidelity. I don't run around telling people, you know, it's not yours, it's Fidelity's. The market needs to look more like the conventional markets. It, it, you know, whether it's institutions or whether it's mass amounts of adoption of portfolio adoption from consumers and their 401ks, you have to have conventional uh, market structure. And a better solution to custody has to be one of them. So that's my three for the front end on that. And that's what's going to do it for me. We got to have front end taken care of with the U.S. dollar to on and off ramps with the stable coins. We got to add the back end clarity for XRP. And we got to get custody to a further degree that's insured. People feel good about it. They don't have to worry about remembering their keys. They just keep it at that place and it's done. They don't have to think about it. Just like when you buy stocks at Fidelity or some other broker. 
That's going to do it for me. Make sure you hit the like, subscribe, and leave a comment below. Make sure you share with somebody you know. And make sure you hit that notification bell so you don't miss a thing. Check out all the links in the description box and the comment section. There's some really great products there. Don't forget about Unstoppable Domains. Insurance.com sold for more than $30 million during the dot-com era. Well, it's the dot-crypto era. What might you find that goes for a nice little penny? I'll catch all of you on the next one.